Today I want to spend some time finding the volume of a figure when we revolve it about the y-axis. So if I revolve it around the y-axis, a few things are going to change. Notice I give you the formula here, the volume equals pi times the integration from a to b. That's the same, but in here we have f of y squared dy. We do this because now we're revolving it around the y-axis instead of the x-axis. If we're in terms of f of y, that tells us it's got to be an x equals form. So we're going to be integrating y's instead of x's with respect to y instead of x's. So let's go ahead and look at example one. If I have f of x equals 3x, well, we can go ahead and set up this figure to see what it looks like. Remember, we have 3x. It's going to look something like this. We have y equals 0, which is the x-axis, and y equals 1. So our figure that we're creating is in here. And if we revolve this very quickly about the y-axis, hopefully we see that we're going to create a cone. And we're creating, and we're finding the volume of that cone. In order to find that volume, we're going to go ahead and solve this equation, y equals 3x, in terms of x. So I'm going to go ahead and divide by 3, and I'm going to see that x is going to equal y over 3. So my volume is going to be pi times the integration. Now, instead of going on the x-axis to find my a and my b value, I'm going to go on my y values. And I'm going to go from 0 to 1 of this function, y over 3 squared dy. We can go ahead and integrate this by hand, or we could use the calculator. And in my calculator, we can go ahead and do our pi times the integration. We're going from 0 to 1. And remember, these are just variables that are arbitrary. So we can change them to x's within our integration as long as we remember that they were y's. So we're going to take the integration from 0 to 1 of x divided by 3 squared dx. And if I hit enter there, I end up with 0.116 as being my volume. If you don't like that, you could go ahead and do it by hand. By hand, our volume would be pi times the integration from 0 to 1 of y squared over 9 dy. Integrating, we'd have pi times y to the third divided by 3. We're already dividing by 9, so we divide by 27 from 0 to 1. So then our volume would be pi times, plugging in our 1, we get 1 27th minus 0. And if I take pi times 1 27th, which is actually taking pi and dividing it by 27, I end up with the same exact answer. So again, it doesn't matter if we plug in the calculator as x's, we'll still get the same answer. In example 2, we're going to get just a little more complicated, where we give you the equation y equals the square root of 9 minus x squared. Well, what does that look like? Well, again, we can go ahead and put that into the calculator, but hopefully we see something like this. Well, if we go between the x-axis and the y-axis, in the first quadrant, we're looking at this figure here. And as I revolve that around the y-axis, then it's going to fill in this other half. That's why they're telling us that it's only going to be in quadrant one, because we're looking at just this portion here, but then revolving it, it fills it in, so we get a hemisphere. Well, what do we know? Well, we know our lower bound is going to be that x-axis or y equals zero. We need to know this upper bound. So how high will this thing go? We know, hopefully, that the highest point is going to be here at x equals 0. When x equals 0, then y is going to equal 3. Again, probably going to be a calculator question. 
So we can go ahead and type that in if you wish. Into our calculator, we get 9 minus x squared. Graphing that, there's our graph. Don't see all of it, but we should see that we go through the point here at 3. Now, you may be asking, why couldn't we just revolve this around the x-axis? Well, we're not going to get the same volume if we revolve it around the x-axis as we do with the y-axis. So you got to be very careful with which axis you're revolving it around. So my volume is going to be pi times the integration from 0 now to 3 of this function in terms of x. So I've got to come up here and go ahead and solve this equation for x. So off to the side, I can go ahead and square both sides to start. So I get y squared equals 9 minus x squared. Subtract my 9. So y squared minus 9 equals a negative x squared. Dividing everything by a negative 1, I get negative y squared plus 9 equals x squared. And I'm going to take the square root of both sides. If I take the square root, remember we have the plus or minus when we take the square root of something. And putting this in a nicer looking form, we have the square root of 9 minus y squared equals x. This gives us a plus or a minus. Which one do we use? Well, in this case, it's not going to matter a whole lot. Because if I take the plus or minus the square root of 9 minus y squared, and I square that out, dy, that plus or minus is going to become positive anyway. But we should realize that we're in quadrant 1, and if we're in quadrant 1, then we're only interested in the positive value of that figure or of that graph. So now, cleaning this up a little bit, I have pi times the integration from 0 to 3 of, if I take the square root and square it, I just get what's under the radical symbol there, or the radicand. So now, again, I can go back to my calculator, if we wish, and we can go and integrate. Go and get my pi in there first. And then we can integrate from 0 to 3 of that function, 9 minus, again, we're going to use x's. Since it's not going to like the y's and makes our life a little easier. So we end up with 56.549 as our rounded answer for our volume. In example three, we have y equals the square root of x, y equals x squared about the x-axis. So they're giving us a little less information about what's happening. So if I graph the square root of x, hopefully we remember that looks like that. And if we look at x squared, x squared is going to come in and then go out like this. So the figure that we're looking at is right here. What are some pieces of information that I need to know? Well, I need to know, again, we're going around the y-axis. We need this point here, which is 0. We also need to know how high on the y-axis we go. Well, we look for that point of intersection. That point of intersection is at 1, 1. Again, we could find that in a calculator if we don't know that already. So we're going to integrate from 0 to 1 pi times that. Now, if I revolve this around the y-axis, notice I have this part here, but again, I'm hollowing out that inside. So how do I find the volume of that? Well, we could find the volume of a solid figure, which would be the x squared, all the way around, which would be pi times the integration from 0 to 1 of that function, which is going to be x squared squared minus the integration of this inside figure, which is the square root of x squared dx. So what I like to do with this, in general, I take the rightmost curve squared minus the left curve squared, uh, in this case, dy, from 0 to 1 of pi. And that's what I like to use instead of the top minus the bottom, which we saw with the x-axis revolutions. So here we're taking pi from 0 to 1. Oh, I've already got it up there. 
I had x to the fourth minus the square root of x squared. Gives me x dy. But what did I forget to do? I forgot to get these into x equals form. So x is going to equal y squared. And in this case, x is going to equal the square root of y. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those since I made the mistake. So our volume is going to equal pi times the integration from 0 to 1. In this case, this was our x squared, y equals x squared, so we have the square root of y squared minus the inside, which is going to be y squared squared dy. And I would have found that out had I done this problem over here because I would have ended up with a negative volume, which we know that couldn't have happened. So we have pi times the integration from 0 to 1 of y, again, the square root of y squared is y, minus y to the fourth dy. Again, I can go ahead and throw this into the calculator. So I've got my pi times the integration from 0 to 1 of x minus x to the fourth dx. And that gives us the volume, a very small volume, of 0.942. I have one last example here. And y is going to equal x squared plus 1. y is going to equal 0. x will equal 0. And x equals 2 revolved about the y-axis. So if I graph x squared plus 1... It's going to look something like this. y equals 0 is going to be the x-axis. x equals 0 is the y-axis. And x equals 2 is this line here, vertical. So again, we're isolating this into quadrant 1. If I isolate this into quadrant 1, that's going to allow us again to revolve this. And it's going to fill in this other part here. So if I take my y equals x squared plus 1, and we go ahead and solve for x. Don't want to make the same mistake I did before. So we get y minus 1 equals x squared. Take the square root of both sides. So I get plus or minus the square root of y minus 1 equals x. Again, we're in the first quadrant, so we know we're only looking at the positive value there. So now as I integrate to find my volume, now my rightmost curve is going to be this 2, or x equals 2 line. So I'm going to have 2 squared, and from that I'm going to subtract this stuff in here. So to subtract, or to get rid of that, I'm going to integrate my square root of y minus 1 squared dy. From, well, what is my value from here to here? I know I'm going from y equals 0. Well, where does x equals 2 intersect with x squared plus 1? Well, I know that x equals 2, 2 squared plus 1 is going to give me 5. So I'm going to integrate from 0 to 5 of 4 minus squaring the square root. Again, we get y minus 1 dy. We could throw this into the calculator the way it is. If you clean it up, be very, very careful. You're going to multiply that negative through, so we get negative y plus 1 dy. Again, multiplied by pi, and that gives us our volume. If you want to clean it up a little more, we can go from 0 to 5 of negative y plus 5 dy. Again, I would go ahead and throw it into the calculator. Most generally going to be a calculator question. So we go to math 9. We're going from 0 to 5 of negative x plus 5 dx. Hitting enter, we end up with a volume of 39.2699, which is 39.27 for our volume. And that's the volume of a figure revolved about the y-axis.